How much time can you imagine? A hundred years? A thousand? A million years? Our Earth holds clues to the immensity of time. From its ancient beginnings and violent past, the Earth has revolutionized how we understand time. Time is more vast than we ever imagined. And that's raising new questions about our ancestral roots, about our connection to life's oldest secrets. Our Earth is revealing our place in time and ultimately, our future. is shaped by time in ways that are often hidden from us. Time, for most of us, is dictated by the rhythms of our daily life. We get up in the morning, we go to work, we come back at night. So watching the days and the years pass by can be quite disconcerting. But what if we could see farther to a greater horizon of time? We know that time stretches into a past that existed before we were born. We can also imagine it rolling on into a future long after we're gone. But just how far back and how far forward does time really go? And where do we fit into this larger time scale of life and even the Earth? to these questions are now fundamentally changing our sense of who we are and even what it means to be human. On a rugged cliff of granite in South Dakota, stonemasons risk life and limb to create something unique. largest sculpture. It's a memorial to Crazy Horse, the Native American chief from the 19th century. But it's also a monument to a uniquely human sense of time, one that allows us to imagine a future beyond our own lives. Ruth Jilkowski is in charge of the carving. This is her life's work. I think sometimes people get into projects such as cathedrals or carving a mountain or the Sphinx and anything that's going to take a long, long time. And you may think, oh, this is going to take me 30 or 40 years. And then all of a sudden, when you get started, it's going to be your lifetime and several more generations. faith in a future that stretches far, far beyond her own life is shared by three generations. Monique, a sculptor, is one of Ruth's seven children. I work here because I believe in what we're doing. And the purpose of Crazy Horse is way more than a mountain carving. The family is continuing the work of Ruth's husband, Korjak. In 1940, the young sculptor was invited by Standing Bear, chief of the Lakota, to create a fitting memorial to Crazy Horse, their great warrior leader. Korjak accepted the challenge and set to work with little more than a jackhammer and a monumental ambition. 
His vision for this project was so big, I don't think he even realized what it was going to entail. Korjak kept carving away the mountain till his death in 1982. But it's only recently, 50 years since Korjak began work, that Crazy Horse's huge 90-foot face is complete. It's anybody's guess exactly when the sculpture will be finished. I don't have the foggiest idea how long it's going to take. I honestly don't think Korchak did. Korjak's vision reflects a deep and fundamental human belief that time exists far beyond our own experience. Such legacies rely on a uniquely human concept of time. Our monuments testify to a certainty that time will always continue onwards. It stretches forwards into an unknowable future and back into a dim and distant past. lies at the very heart of our humanity. We learn from the past. We pass on that wisdom to the future. That's been the bedrock of our civilization. This awareness that time stretches into a distant past has driven us for thousands of years to ask one of the greatest questions of humanity. When did time itself begin? In the 17th century, an archbishop from Dublin decided to find out. For James Usher, the beginning of time was the moment of God's creation, of the earth, the heavens, and all of humanity. So he started with the Old Testament. All Usher really had to do was add up the various ages of the patriarchs, because the Bible tells us what age each person was when his son was born. So, for example, Genesis 5 tells us that Adam was 130 years old when his son Seth was born. Seth was 105 years old when his son Enosh was born. But at the end of the Old Testament, the family trees run out. Finally, in 1650, he determined a date for the beginning of time with stunning precision. In the very first paragraph, Usher dates the creation of the world to exactly the evening before the 23rd of October, 4004 BC. James Usher had established the very moment of God's creation. Our place was at the center of the universe, the earth created for our purpose. Humanity, the earth, and time itself were 6,000 years old. Compared to our lifetimes, 6,000 years is an incredible amount of time. But around 100 years later, that time scale was about to be dwarfed. For all of Usher's library full of books, the Earth itself was beginning to present quite a different story. And the first man to realize it was a problem was a Scottish farmer by the name of James Hutton. Here he is. James Hutton spent most of his life marveling at natural processes, mainly on his own farm. And his investigations would lead to an entirely new idea of time. I'm about to look for the clues that led Hutton to rethink the age of the Earth and overturn Usher's 6,000-year history. Geologist Dave Thayer is going to be my guide. Well, I think it's ironic that 
people used to wonder how old is the Earth, but the answer was underneath their feet in the rocks <laughs> all the time. Yes. They were walking on the answer. Yes, and they just didn't have the knowledge of uh, finding out how to uh, open that book and read the, <laughs> read the answer. So Dave, uh, what are we going to see on this journey now? We're going to gaze into an abyss of time. Mm -hmm. Many people come to the place we're approaching and they don't really understand what they're looking at. James Hutton's insights came from Scotland. But Dave's brought me to a place where the same features have been carved out on a much larger scale. Grand Canyon in Arizona. 270 miles of Colorado River flow across two states, carving out a chasm one mile deep. It's created a landscape on an epic scale. Let's have a seat here. And now, Dave, the Colorado River is a small little thing. How can the Colorado River gouge out such a huge canyon? The river is digging the canyon deeper at the rate of one foot every thousand years. Mm -hmm. And in that time, it's just all this rubble is eroding down into it from the rain. I see. You can imagine how long that's taking because it's all changing to sand as it goes. A mile below us, the river continues to cut its path through the rock carrying it away in its silty waters. So we're talking about the power of water, right? I mean, water, water carved this cathedral out of nothing. Yep, yep. And how long has this erosion been taking place? Well, at least five and a half million years is, is what right? they say. <laughs> Following similar clues, Hudden realized that Usher's 6,000 year age for Earth had to be wrong. Unimaginable eons of time were needed for water to carve out valleys. And Hutton noticed something else. The layers of rock revealed by erosion showed a still greater scale of time. Now, Dave, when I look at a rock, <laughs> it's boring. A rock is a rock is a rock. But you're telling me that each rock has a story, right? Well, that's true, Mitchell. Um, uh, you can see all the different colors of the layers in the canyon. Mm -hmm. And each one has a different thing to tell. Amazingly, long, long before the rock was eroded away, its layers had to have been formed. Oh, here's a nice place to see the strata. The I see, the yeah, right here. Yeah. This red layer right here would be a siltstone that formed at the edge of an ocean. And you know, it took probably a thousand years to form one inch of it. A thousand years? Yeah. Oh my God. So you're telling me That's that incredible. All, all of human recorded history, going back to the Babylonians and the yeah. Egyptians, would be is just that much. Just a few inches. And that staggering. Yeah. 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 So this is like, uh, like a time machine, basically, right? Uh, a thousand years per inch on average? On average, uh, uh, yeah. If you, if you just took the whole length of just the sedimentary rocks in the canyon that have been deposited here. Uh -huh. uh, Floods and rivers and streams and the ocean coming in. Staggers yeah. the imagination. It right? does, indeed. In fact, just six inches of the Grand Canyon's rock face is equivalent to Usher's time scale for the whole of Earth's existence. The Earth had begun to reveal the true immensity of time. A scale of time that was inconceivable an unending abyss. For me, Hutton wrote a great passage which summarizes the experience of the Grand Canyon. And that is, the result therefore of our present inquiry is that we find no vestige of a beginning, no prospect for an end. The great vastness of Earth time had been revealed and a scientific quest had begun. 
If the Earth was in 6,000